insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens, episode 78, Summer in Quarantine. I'm your host, Madison Whalen, and my co-host, Joseph Whalen. Hi, Maddie. How you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. How about you? I'm doing all right. Um, before we get started, uh, I did want to throw a couple of plugs out there. Um, I wanted to invite everyone to subscribe. You can get uh, all of our shows uh, our audio podcasts you can find as Insights into Teens on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcast, Amazon, and pretty much any place you subscribe to podcasts. Our video version of our podcast you can find under Insights into Things. Um, you can catch us streaming six days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. You can email your comments, questions, and suggestions to comments at insightsintothings.com. You can catch us on Twitter at insights underscore things or on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. You can also get high res versions of our videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things, or you can catch links to all of those things on our website at insightsintothings.com. Now, let's get on with the show. Yay. So what are we going to be talking about today, Maddie? So today we are going to be talking about what we did over the summer. Um, About a year ago, we actually did something for the summer, a podcast for the summer, which was summer activities. And today, since summer's coming to a close and summer vacation's coming to a close and we're all going to go back to school at some point and work, um... Uh, we decided to do the podcast on what we did this summer. And this summer was significantly different from last summer because of COVID. Yep. So, you know, it was one of those things we made the most of it. We didn't get any real trips in. Um, no Disney trips, nothing really down to the shore or any of the typical ones. Mm -mm. So we were pretty much homebound the entire time, like a lot of people were. And we tried to make the most of it. So we're going to talk about some of the things we did, some of the things we made, and some of the things we experienced. Yep. Ready to get started? Sure thing. All right. So I did a lot of recreational things, um, as most kids probably do over the summer, because it helps them to not have burnout like we talked about last week. So... Um, we have a few different categories in this segment. So the first one was games, you know, like video games and stuff. So I would play games on my devices like Minecraft, Gosha Club, and The Sims 4. You know, the typical stuff. <laughs> um, so honestly, so now you you were playing for a while there. You were playing Sims 3 though. What yeah. what prompted the migration to Sims 4? Well, um. I knew that The Sims 4 had existed um, while I was playing The Sims 3, and although The Sims 3 was a really nice game, um, I learned that you could do a lot more, there were a lot more things that you can do with The Sims 4, and honestly a lot of people on YouTube were like doing The Sims 4 and not many were on The Sims 3, and I'm like, mmm. So, so, so what, what do you like doing on Sims 4? What's the fun thing about that? Well, there are multiple fun things. I like creating different families, and I like cre and I like building houses and doing cool challenges like the every room, the every room is a different blank challenge, and the tiny home for eight Sim challenge. So yeah. Now they do have that new Sims TV show, the game show. Have you been watching that at all? Has that served as an inspiration? I mean, yeah, I've seen like. 
I've seen the TV show, and I, and it's actually a thing that in the game because there's the sparked challenge that um was probably that was included in the TV show. Um, and there's a chal- and the first challenge was like your dream wedding destination, and you can, and Sims can and Simmers can create them and share them on the gallery. Oh, interesting. Yep. Very cool. So yeah, The Sims has been really fun. So now your Minecraft. Let me ask you about Minecraft. When when you're playing Minecraft, are you playing on a server with other people? Are you playing with your friends, or are you just playing standalone? I'm just playing standalone. I don't really know. I mean, I play it on my Switch, and I don't know how to go online because that's a whole other process. So I kind of stay offline, and I just play the game alone. Okay. All right, cool. So besides video games, what else are you playing? Well, um, we have um, an Echo, and I'm not going to say her name, but she ha- and there are like games you can play, trivia games, and um, since we have one in our kitchen, um, whenever me and Mommy go and have lunch, we play games like Either Or, Trivia Battle, and then a board game we actually recently played called Geek Trivia, and then another one on the Echo, which is Disney Hits Quiz. And who usually wins those? Um, either or it is really not a battle. It's just a game of would you rather, and you learn, like, anyone else that's played, you get to see the majority. Um, sometimes we are part of the jo- majority, and sometimes we're part of the minority. So it's more of a uh, theoretical survey type thing. Yeah. Um, for Trivia Battle, it's actually a statewide game. You normally play it with us as well. Um, Trivia Battle, you... So there are eight questions every day for them, and you face against another state. And however many points you get is added to the overall score of how many people in your state have played. And then you can see the state leaderboards and the player standings as well. Okay. Um, so besides games, what else have you been doing? Um, I've been doing... I've been watching a bit of TV. So, me and Mommy would do movie night every su- fr- from Sunday through Thursday. Um, we don't normally do it on the weekends. I don't normally watch, like, cable TV. I don't know how to say that. Um, no, I think that's a good way of saying it. Yeah. But, um, I do watch a show with Mommy called Big Brother. I'm pretty sure some people, um, know what Big Brother is. Um, but for those of you who don't, it's um... I don't know if it's, like, how to classify it. It's sort of like a game. It's a reality competition. Reality competition, pretty much. Um, where um, the house guests have to be in a house. Like, there are 16 house guests, and one gets eliminated every week until there's a winner. Right. So, yeah. Um, so, we also changed that. So, every Sunday, Wednesday, and Thursday, me and Mommy would watch Big Brother instead of a movie, since it's now on, so. Right. Um, yeah, that's... What about anything special? Have you watched anything special this summer? Um, like what? Well, like the one big family thing we did a couple of weeks ago, and we've got another big family thing coming up this weekend on Disney+. Plus. Um, yeah, we, uh... Hamilton? Oh, yeah, Hamilton. I remember that. Yeah. We watched Hamilton. The phenomenon of Hamilton. <laughs> what yeah. did you think of that? Um, I actually thought it was really cool. Um, I really liked a lot of the songs, and the story wasn't too complicated, and it was very well put out, and I thought there was, like, a really... In- it was really interesting story, and um, you said afterwards that it was actually a pretty good representation of what actually happened. Yeah, it was. I was very impressed, and I'm not someone who I don't really do musicals myself. Yep. Um, and I certainly don't do Broadway plays, uh, but this is certainly this was one show that would definitely uh, swing me towards that. At the quality, the set design, the scripting, the songs. Um, the subtle nuances where each character had a certain style of song that they would get, and that really defined their personality. Yeah, that was really cool. Uh, it was it was very well done. I was very impressed with it. Mm-hmm. So, so we've done games, we've done TV. <clears throat> What's next on the hit list of things to do over the summer? 
We've got internet. It's kind of obvious. We point. have to have internet. <laughs> so, I would spend a lot of time on YouTube. I'm one of those people that just scrolls through things that I find interesting on YouTube and just... Doom scrolling, we call it. I, yeah. <laughs> Um, I'd watch you. I'd watch videos when I was bored, as well as listen to some t to some songs on YouTube as well. What type of videos do you typically watch? Um, normally just stuff that I find interesting. I have been watching um, some. I've been watching like art. Um, I've been watching art videos, but I also watch sim videos and just weird videos that I think are hilarious, and just. Um, like art tutorial videos? How do you do things and Well, stuff? not art tutorials. Um, this one YouTuber, YouTuber I follow um, posts videos every Friday, and um, they and they just do art. And um, she doesn't do tutorials with it. Um, they, they just um, make, do art. And so you just watch them like... Uh, drawing or painting or something like that yeah okay kind of like a bob ross type thing you don't know who bob ross is do you um i'm learning more about him okay <laughs> he, he was a very famous artist that had a had a program on i think it was pbs mm -hmm. um and he would he would the thing that was always interesting was he would do really quick paintings and was very good at doing these quick landscapes and stuff but he would narrate while he was doing it and it was the narration that was you know kind of hilarious as he would do it mm. so are you learning stuff by watching this different techniques you're getting exposed to different art styles and stuff i mean yeah um i definitely watch like a bunch of edits that people do um and i really think that they're cool and i like a lot of their art styles um okay what about music are you listening to music on the internet um, I mean, I listen to just songs I find interesting on YouTube. It's just so songs that, um, sound interesting or that I just can picture a scene by. I don't listen to a specific t style of music, but most of the songs I listen to are pop. So. Okay. So what else have you been doing for recreation over the summer? Um, um, that, um, for social is our next category as social as you can be under these conditions yeah i don't use social media so i'm not that kind of social um although i'm not able to visit my friends now i still am able to keep in contact with them i have most of my friends phone numbers and i'm able to text them and call them on certain occasions so with some of my friends i just text them with others i can facetime them so we can actually see each other and we don't have to constantly wait for each other to text back so thank God for technology so you can stay in touch with your friends. Yeah, pretty much. That's nice. the only real way I'm able to be social at this time, besides, you know, being social with you guys. Well, and there's nothing wrong with that. You're, you know, a difficult situation, and you're making the best of it as well as you can. Yep. Anything else from a recreational standpoint before we move on? Um, honestly, for the social thing, I... Um, sometimes go out with mommy to like the park or to get groceries just so I can get out and get some fresh air. But um, I don't know if that's classified under social because I don't really interact with others. Well, so. I guess that's about as social as we get these days. Pretty much. So take a quick break. We'll come back and we'll talk about some more creativity things. Mm -hmm. All right. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Starforge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at 
www.thesecondsithempire.com. So the next segment we, ha- we have is the creativity aspect of everything. Um, anyone who's been with us for a while now knows that I have some, like, a bit of an insane um, creativity. I'm overly imaginative and use my creativity in many different ways. And As long as you always use your superpowers for good, sweetheart. Yep. So the first category we have is drawing. That was one of the main things that I used for my creative aspect. I would sometimes get out a notebook and draw some characters. And most of the characters were people that I created in Gasha Club or Gasha Life. Um, I sort of used that platform in order to draw characters in my own style. Um, recently, I actually began doing digital art. Um, I would draw characters, and unlike how I would draw them in my notebook, I'd actually give them color, because I never really covered co- uh, colored in any of my art that I made in my notebook or that I drew um, on paper, because... Uh, they never really looked good, and I'm a lefty, and they would just get smudged. You make all smeared characters. Pretty much, <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like shading, but unintentional. Right. And it gets annoying. Um, but with the digital art, um, I can color in easily, and the art looks a little more fine. Although I still have to wear a glove, because if I just do it barehand, then it just drags across the screen and draws in places that I don't want it to draw. Gotta love touch-sensitive screens. (laughs) Yep. So, any questions for me for my drawing? So, what prompted you to start doing the digital art? Was there something that you learned, something that inspired you? What moved you from drawing in a notebook to digital drawing? Well, for one thing, um, drawing in a notebook kind of got annoying after a little while because it would always get smeared and my hand would always get covered in the graphite of the pen of the pencil. Um, and it was kind of annoying. And I saw a bunch of people doing digital art and I kind of wanted to do it myself. Um, so now when you say digital art, what exactly do you mean? Like art that you make on... Um, like a tablet. Okay. So on. you're don't drawing, drawing on a tablet. What are you using? You're using a, a Apple Pencil or different stylus or something to draw? Yeah, I'm using um I don't know exactly what it's called, but it but it's basically a pencil where you can um draw across the screen and it's actually really nice because um it actually has um a it's like the tip of a pencil, so it's way easier to draw and make thinner lines, which is always good for, like, line art. Right. Um, because I need it for the line art. Um, but for coloring, it also works as well. Now, is there a particular application you use on the tablet? I mean, yeah, I use Procreate. Um, I know a lot of people use stuff like IBS Paint X, which um, I'm thinking of maybe trying out. But... Um, um, Procreate's very good because I can layer things on and I don't have to worry about messing up. And there's also this one little tool I'm using now, which is able for you to copy a color that you need, um, which is definitely good because I make, make, I make mistakes and I need to go back and fix them. So, so you're using a stylus, drawing stylus of some sort. Yep. On an iPad using the application Procreate at this point. Yep. Okay. I just want to get that out there. So if anybody else wants to do digital art, they've got a head start on how to do it. Yep. And I know that there are like flat tablets that are larger to use and easier to draw on. um, But I haven't really upgraded to that yet. So for now, I'm okay with just using my tablet. Okay. So what else have you been doing from a creativity standpoint? So the next one we have here is movie making. So, um, I, I guess I was sort of inspired by the podcast. I know you edit the podcast and, um, I've also been inspired by other people on YouTube who've done similar movie making things and I'm like, hmm, what if I try that myself? Um, so... I'm learning how to create a movie. Um, so the movie is um, 
the movie I I'm calling it it's sort of a series with 12 episodes I'm at least thinking at least 12 episodes um, called the six X's now is this a uh, animated is it live action how are you shooting this um, I'm shooting this through Gasha Club um, because you can make scenes take screenshots and I'm also using another app to um, edit it and make it um, and like add effects and stuff um, so what app is that? Um, that's Kindmaster. The only problem with Kindmaster is that they have a watermark, and you need to have a subscription for it. But honestly, I've seen a lot of people on YouTube who don't um, get the subscription and just have the watermark, and I'm like, mm, okay, whatever. Fair enough. So what all does this involve? Like, have you learned stuff in the process of doing this? Have you uh, come up with your own type of movie making are you writing scripts like what all does it does it involve well um you suggested that i would start with a script so that i knew exactly like what dialogue i needed and what scenes um i needed so um i first started off by going off with the basic idea of the main characters and the main storyline after that um i would then put it into a script and then we figure it out, like, what the title will be and all that. So I actually have the script for the first episode only. I'm hoping to make it, like, a small series of movies. And the first episode is basically an introduction to um, some, of the, some of the characters and um, starts off the story. Now, are these original characters or are these characters you're borrowing from something else? Um, I'm making them original characters, trying to give them, like good personalities um and i actually have an idea of how to create characters like some of the most important things that i think for the personality for their personalities is how they interact with others how they react to things and um what actions they take in certain situations so i'm i've been using that and um, I have an interesting way on how to have 12 episodes. So the reason I have 12 episodes is because there are 12 main characters, 6 heroes and 6 villains. Um, and I want them to switch perspectives. So the first will be one of the heroes, the second will be like the vice versa of the villain. Okay. And the whole twist, and another one of the twi- I'm having a lot of twists, okay? A lot of so, twists. You're like an M. Night Shyamalan movie. Yeah. Um, One of the twists is that, well, it's going to be introduced in the first episode, that the villains and the heroes are actually ex-partners. Okay. So, like... That's where the six exes come from? Yeah. So, um, the three female hero characters are the exes of the three male villain characters, and the male heroes are the exes of the female villains. It's all very uh, well-balanced there. Yeah, that, and that's basically the entire thing. It's, like, all about balance, sort of. Interesting. So in the process of doing this, and let me just tick off a couple of skills that you're polishing here. So in the process of doing this, you are learning how to write scripts and screenplays. Mm-hmm. You are learning how to edit stop-motion animation. Uh, you are learning how to, you know, generate. Fortunately, the the application you use helps you generate the character, so you're not hand drawing every single frame. Yep. You're learning how to work with green screens and backgrounds, and you're learning really about storytelling and character development. Mm-hmm. So this is a kind of a a long term summer project of how to make a movie. Pretty much. Very cool. I think I think when you get to the other side of the tunnel on this, and you get done with everything. I think you're going to have a very good set of skills to continue to work on moving through school. So I think you make a a very promising cinematographer. Yep, I have another career that I could do. Great. Right. So what else have you been doing from a creativity standpoint? So now we have some project stuff that I've been doing. So, since you guys didn't want me to just sit around playing games, even though I was doing other stuff, you got me some kits that showed that I could do, so I could do something productive and not just sit around watching YouTube and playing games all day. 
Okay. Do you have any of those to demonstrate? Yep. Um, the first was a magnetic kit, which was a sign, which was a science kit that showed how magnets can defy gravity and physics um, that most objects go by. So I have a few. So I have a few um, experiments. Give me one moment. So these were kits that I happened to just do a quick stem, a search for STEM kits for your age group uh, on Amazon. And the kits ranged in price anywhere from like $15, I think, up to $30 was what I got one on sale for. And they're really designed for uh, teaching you about science and technology and engineering and, and math, which obviously is what STEM is for. Um, but, you know, it's a couple of hours of learning things and experimenting and playing around with them. So the first one that you have here is the magnetic set. Yep, and right. I have an experiment. So let's see if it. this camera angle works best for that. Um, maybe. Well, the other one is that angle, and that's not going to work so well. Yeah. So let's go with this angle here. Alrighty. So You're over here. I know. Sorry. So this is a way on how to make a scale. So um, there's our. So over here we have the base plate of it, and then there's one of the sticks. Um, is it better than bacon? Kit. Like Yoda stick? Seriously. <laughs> so you put it into the base plate, and then there's also... A piece of plastic that you fell, that fell off. Yeah, this piece of plastic that actually is used to measure the grams for the weight. Okay. And the interesting thing... The interesting thing with the magnets is that... So the magnets have two sides to them. The red side and the blue side. Uh, one represents the It's North like the Pole. force. It's like the light side and the dark side, right? Pretty much. Okay. Um, so the cool way on how... So this uses the um, ability of repelling magnets to make the scale. So first you have two magnets that um, have the blue side facing up and the red side facing down. You put them on the pole and then you decide... So um, basically the whole thing with magnets is opposites attract. So... Red and blue attract each other, but blue and blue don't attract each other. So there's another magnet that you need to use, and you put the blue side towards the other blue side, and it sort of floats. You can't put it down. It can't touch. So you made a shock absorber. Yep. And then there's this plate, which ma represents the weight. And it can. And there's this little thing at the end. I don't think anyone can see it, but there's this little thing little at the end. A little notch there. Yeah, a little notch that... Um, goes um, around the plastic thingy, so... Okay, you so that's the indicator for the weight. Yep. Um, and to demonstrate the weight of an object, I got this weird thing. I don't know what it is, but... Um, it's colorful and people can see it. Yep. So, if we put it on the scale, it is about 20 grams. Interesting. Yeah. And if it falls off the <laughs> scale, gravity still works. <laughs> Uh, yeah, great demonstration of how gravity works and how this completely defies it. So. so that kit itself, that was one of, what, like a half dozen different things you could do with the kit? Um, um about. There were, I think, six or seven projects that you could do. Another one that was around the same thing as this was a spring. So you make all of the magnets, there are multiple ones in the kit, and... You make them all repel each other, and that's the red side, and it makes a cool little spring. That is pretty cool. So there's that, then there was the perpetual motion machine where we took the pencil, we put magnets on either side, we levitated that, and that you could spin that, and because it was a frictionless um, cylinder, it would spin for a ridiculous amount of time. Right. So, so that was fun with magnets. What other kits did you did we get you? Uh, the second kit you got me was a clay making kit. Um, since I liked creating my characters and drawing them, you decided to um, have my characters created in 3D. So that's why we got the claymation kit. So the, the clay itself was clay. an acrylic clay. Mm-hmm. And what you would do is it, it came in all different colors. Yep. You can mold it to whatever shape or whatever you want. 
And then once you hand it to the shape you want, you bake it. There's a quote unquote recipe. You bake it and it hardens it up and it makes it solid, solid and not malleable anymore. Did you have any examples of that? Yep. Yep, I do. Let's see. So the first was a character that I had made. Let's give you this camera here. Okay, so uh, I made this character. I'm trying to angle it. Here, let me see. I really should have set the other cameras up. Yep. So that character, um, it looks a little dead in the face because I haven't painted on it. Um, <laughs> it looks dead in the face because it's not happy. <laughs> it's soulless. We haven't given it its soul yet. Yeah. Um, this is actually um, a character in my new series. Um, this is really one of the elemental forms. Um, basically, the entire series is just about how these high school kids um, find these necklaces and they're... All right, don't plug the, okay. don't plug the movie yet. Okay. Okay. That comes later. And, and then, then you made... A piece of bacon. Bacon. <laughs> because um, that I That is a convincing that, piece of bacon there. Yeah, look at the back. It actually looks toasted. <laughs> and it's super shiny. <laughs> I liked that aspect. I just saw that I could have, like, the colors of bacon and then, like... We were joking about bacon earlier. I think you had just had um, bacon for breakfast. And I'm like, hmm, why don't I make bacon? So I did. Nice. So, yeah. And then there was one more that we did, right? Yep. Uh, yep. Which one was that one? Uh, that was the robotic and coding your own droid kit. Okay. Um, so you can make your own R2 by coding it. Um, I have so to I'm going to give you the wide angle shot on this one here. We're going to give you that shot there. Okay. I might need to move this. You might. Yep. So, so tell us about this one. So uh, this one is a very complex kit and it's probably for more older ages um, since there are so many like Well it was age appropriate for you. Yeah I know. So, inside of R2's body... You just ripped his chest right off, huh? Okay. Yeah, uh, this is so you can better fix the controls. So, there's a battery at the back of this that powers it. Um, right Let's, there. All right, let me give you this shot here. There we go. Yeah, so there's a battery in the back here that um, you have. So, that's a 9-volt battery. Yep, and at the front, there are pieces that connected magnetically, um, so you could code and wire them. There's also wheels at the bottom that are used with um, uh, some of the coding blocks. So what and can he do? Okay, let me just turn him on. He's going to speak. That certainly sounds like R2-D2. Yep, uh, one moment while I put his chest back on. He's naked. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Um, there's actually... God. The, um, Easier said than done. Yep. There you, there, you go. there you go. So, there's actually an app you can have on your phone that um, has the controls for it. Uh, let's just hope this is enough area for him to go. So, you can... So, it's sort of like a remote control, but it's coded. So you can move him. And you can tie a string to him and play with the cats with him. <laughs> yeah, we did that. Sadly, we don't have any video, but, you know, maybe we can post it. So this is you controlling him directly, but do you have the ability to program commands into him to, to do things? Yep. One moment, please. Let's see. Um, we're going to do the personality one. Okay. And he makes different sounds. He obviously lights up. He's got some lights on the front of him there. Yep. Uh, let's say he's in the Death Star. Oh, I don't think that was the thing I needed. Oh, well, it's fine. We'll make him talk. Okay. Uh, one moment. All righty. So. God loves live uh, podcasts. Yep. You got to love them. All righty. So we're going to get him to talk. So there speak, are different R2, speak. Hang on, there are different sounds that you can give him. I'm going to give him this one. Oh, uh, he doesn't seem very happy there. 
It's literally called Scream. Nice. <laughs> and that's with the coding. All right, so you, you can program him to do different things. Obviously, we don't want to do anything up on the table here because we don't have that much room. Yeah, but, you know, the sounds are fun. So so let me, let me ask you a couple of questions about the projects that we did, that you did. So um, were they fun, first of all? Yes. Did they help to keep you occupied and pass the time? I mean, yeah. Um, I really liked a lot. I really liked all of them. Um, and I definitely think that the droid kit was my favorite out of all of them, though. Okay. Uh, oh, I should probably have turned him off. Probably. One Otherwise, one. he'll sit there and talk through the whole thing and steal the show. Yeah. Cute <clears throat> so... Did you find that you learned anything from these projects, or were these just, you know, things to do to keep you occupied? I mean, with the magnetic kit, I learned more about magnets and gravity and physics, which was really cool, and how I could even make my own perpetual motion machine. Okay. So I liked that. With the clay-making kit, I learned how to mold... I think you did. A, I was really impressed with the level of detail that you were able to come up with from the molding of the clay. I really was. Yeah. Um, the hair was actually kind of um, hard to get, but I like how I did the front. And my hair is probably like the fav my favorite part of it, the right. entire thing. Um, and with the um, droid making kit, I learned how to code and how to wire a robot. And did you have fun with all of it? Okay. So besides that, what what's the last creativity thing that we had here? It was podcasting. Coincidentally, another plug. A. Hey. <laughs> so I learned how to research and write up show notes for the podcast, which is why I've been hosting the last few, because I've been doing the notes. So I learned how to come up with subjects and how to research on them. And I think you did a bang up job so far. Yep. And I've hosted and run a few podcasts. Awesome. So that was it for creativity. Yep. Pretty much. Shall we take a break? And go to the next one. Okay. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. So the final segment we ha what we have for what I did over the summer is the educational aspect. And I can tell some people were groaning at this. <laughs> <laughs> at least the kids, because they know about how they have to do summer work over the, um, over the uh, summer. And uh, that's exactly our first topic. Well, and I don't think it was as grueling as some kids make it out to be. Because yeah. you have a very unique approach to it. Let's talk a little bit about your approach to doing your summer project. So I had a few things I had to do for summer work. One of them was, of course, summer reading. I was reading um, a book called Booked, uh, coincidentally. Wow. Um, and it was actually by the same author that um, I had to read my last summer book on. Um, so the uh, books were kind of related in a way. So... Um, and the way I took it, the way I approach, um, summer reading is that I figure out how many pages there are in the book and how many days I have to finish the book. Like, because 
um, when school starts, you're going to have to answer stuff about the book to uh, so that everyone so that your teachers know that you read it. Now, some people decide to do it in the beginning, and some people um, save it to the end, and those aren't really the best approaches, I think. Like, if you do it early on, then you'll probably forget some of the stuff, and if you do it too late, then you might not be able to finish the book in time and not get all the information that you needed from the book. So my approach to it was to take how many pages, um, I, that there were in the book and how many days I had to finish it. I, I think, divided them, and then I got how many pages I needed to read per day, and every day I would read that number of pages or more if I needed to. Okay, so you basically took how much time you had to do the work, how much work you had, and then you divide it into slices that you can do at a regular pace so that you're bringing that you're absorbing that knowledge but you're absorbing it over the course of the entire summer so you're not forgetting it and you're ensuring that you have enough time to get it done yep and is that approach working for you i mean yeah it's been working for me since i started it i remember the book and if i need to if i think that there are important parts of the book i can write that down or um, put notes in the book so that I know that I need to come back to it when if I ever forget it. So now are you on pace to get all your work done? I mean, yeah. I'm almost finished with the book, and since I'm almost going to go back to school, it kind of checks out. Perfect. Well, another another well-run project for school there. Yep. Besides your schoolwork, there were some other things that you did. What else did you do? Um, well... Uh, the other thing was the virtual camps I was doing. Um, what? No, go ahead. Okay. Um, so, um, Mommy, since she thought that the projects weren't enough, she decided to sign me up for some online sessions, so I, once again, wasn't sitting on my bed all day, which I still kind of was. So. Okay. <laughs> so, she found a website called Varsity Tutors, and... Um, they offered camp sessions for all ages and with different subjects each. Um, most of the classes were free, and um, they were, and from the experiences I've had, they were basically week long. Most of them were week long Zoom meetings. Um, they were hour long sessions for five days a week. So, so you know, not to throw out a Hamilton reference, but. It was the Zoom where it happened. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so so what did you learn? What type of subjects did you work on with these virtual camps? Um, so some of the ones I worked with, the first one I did was at-home science experiments. And since I really like science and doing experiments are fun, um, is fun, I ended up with that. And basically we did... Um, five different projects each day, and it was one of the only camps where we needed supplies. And um, one of them was, of course, a Mentos and a soda. But the lessons weren't just all about the experiments. Like, we didn't just do the experiment and then we were done. Um, we actually learned the science of it and how, and how, um, like, we learned the science of water on one of the days, and, um, we learned a lot about how we basically learned why things happen for experiments and um i think it was really cool because not only did you get the fun experiment part but you also got the but you also got the um the reasoning behind it and the um intelligence or the learning aspect of it so it was entertaining and educational yeah pretty much Okay. Are you glad that, that Mommy signed you up for those? I mean, yeah. Most of the ones I had uh, I had picked myself, um, like the Minecraft Storyland and the um, science ones. But there were ones that Mommy signed me up for because she still didn't want me to sit around and I apparently didn't get enough. So she signed me up for a Google Maps, um, um, a travel with Google traveled the world with google maps um class and then she also signed me up for um uh, uh science in the kitchen 
Okay. Um, one, I remember that. Now, is it something that you would want to do next summer if it was available? I mean, sure. Um, if there were, like, new stuff, yeah, I'd totally do it. I okay. Guess. Well, what about during the school year if they have uh, continuing programs and stuff like that? Is it something you'd want to continue to do? Uh, it would depend on how much schoolwork I have. I mean, I am now in three advanced classes, and I'm struggling to and i'm still debating on whether i should even stay in my band class so i'm not entirely sure so we'll see how things go and then maybe we'll we'll look into it yeah so we've got one more thing from the educational side i threw this one in here because i think it was worth mentioning and that is a research assistant um and so we're working on developing another podcast for the network uh insights into history so in, in doing that, we have a lot of research that has to be done to get all the episodes. We're, we're trying to write all the episodes before we start production on the podcast. And this is something that I had asked you to help me with. And the one podcast, the, the one episode of Insights into History that I had had you research for me was regarding some Revolutionary War um, battle sites. Um, and you did a very good job. You, you gave me a, a great summary that served as the basis for the entire episode. Uh, describe to me how that was for you. How how difficult was it to do the research? How much time did it take? That type of stuff. Well, um, there were two different areas that I was researching. One was kind of easy to do, and there was a lot of good information. There was a bit of good information on it. But the other one was kind of harder to research. There were very few sites that I could find, and I noticed that I had less information on that because I really didn't have many sources to look up from. So, and I definitely, th and the whole thing with our history podcast, um, you know, is looking up stuff that not many people know about. So Right, that is the theme of the new show, is it's kind of the obscure history that doesn't get the... Uh, spotlight that a lot of more common things do but i think you did a very good job and i appreciate the work that you put in on it thank you so let's take a quick break come back and i want to take a look at the coming school year and and what we can expect what it looks like how crazy it is and and talk about you know any apprehensions you might have all righty So, the coming school year, you know, it's going to start in a few weeks. Um, New Jersey, uh, our school district at least, is doing the first month entirely remotely. Uh, we kind of knew you would be doing it remotely already, at least until probably the first of the year because of COVID-19. Um, how do you feel about that? Um, you know, we kind of did the whole school at home thing the last couple of months of last year. And to me, and I'd like to get your opinion on it, but to me it seemed like it was rushed, it wasn't very well thought out, wasn't very well planned, and everyone was just kind of sort of doing what they needed to do to get through the motions to get to the summer. And the, the documentation that's been put out so far on the new school year has me thinking that at least they're thinking it through a little bit more and they're a little bit more organized. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, yeah, I'd say that the um, end of the last school year was kind of rushed. No one really knew what we were going to do for being online. But luckily, most of my classes already had, like, Google Classrooms on them, so it wasn't too entirely hard. One of my classes was, like, entirely based on Google Classroom, so... Um, it wasn't too hard to adapt to them, but definitely a lot of students um, at the end of the year were like, didn't feel like doing it because they had lost the motivation. And I can definitely agree that being stuck at home for so long makes you lose motivation. I used to be trying to be active, doing just dance in the living room, you know, trying to get my body active. And now I just, you know, kind of sit around. Um, so is there anything in particular that you're looking forward to in the coming school year? I mean, I'm hopefully looking forward to the fact that um, 
we realized that we don't have any cases of COVID and like um hopefully COVID is dialing back down and I'm looking forward to seeing how my friends coping or cope cope with it and hoping that they're doing well because I don't know if they're some of them are going back to school and others are just gonna do fully remote. Is there anything that you're not looking forward to? Well, with the fact of if COVID does end up taking up and then everyone has to do remote learning, it might not be the best. And I'm not really looking forward to all the chaos that's going to be happening and any inter- and na- and like if anyone does get end up getting COVID and there are stronger cases. Yeah. So it's sort of a halfway point at that point. Yeah, it's kind of scary. It's kind of scary. So how do you think? Are you feeling optimistic about the new school year? Or are you still wait and see? Because uh, you've got, like you mentioned, you've got a couple of advanced classes that you're going to be taking and you're going to be doing them remotely. Do you have any concerns about taking on that kind of responsibility and not being physically in the classroom? I mean, I really don't know what is going to happen with, like online classes sure like by the end of the school year i had done it but i was never really homeschooled i always went to public schooling and i never really stayed home and learned but i can understand that some people especially with parents with younger children that they would want their kids going to school for the older kids it's more of a they're able to learn online so it's not as important to get them into the classroom so um i i mean i had a few rough bumps with the um with the end of last school year and having to do full remote for probably the entire school year not entirely sure um you know it's still going to be rough and already going into having three advanced classes i was not used to um i'm not entirely sure what that will bring if i can no longer be a part of like any extracurricular things like band um i'm worried about that so yeah well you know what like 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 we have done with this so far we'll make the best of it and you know we'll get through it yeah so that was all we had for our coming school year segment let's take a quick break we'll come back and we'll get your closing remarks go for closing remarks so i'm not entirely sure how to put this but i'll just go up come up with something so i just want to say that through these tough times try and stay optimistic try to look on the bright side it's hard yes but i mean it is possible um try to have fun any way you can even if you can't go out or do things that you normally do and if you do have to go out please wear a mask and please stay away from people because a lot of people don't do that and it and it can get you and it can get you sick and you don't want that so just just have fun but uh stay safe Sounds good. That's good advice. Before we do go, I do want to invite you once again to subscribe to us on your favorite podcast network. Uh, Also, we'd love to get your feedback. Um, What do you like? What would you like us to talk about? Um, What are your thoughts on some of the things we're talking about? You can email those over to comments at insightsintothings.com or hit us up on Twitter at insights underscore things. Uh, I also want to invite folks to Uh, Check out our long-form articles on Medium at medium.com slash insights into things. And you. And don't forget to to check out our other two podcasts, Insights in Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights into Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother, Sam. All right, that's it. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone.